So why does gaming feel stagnant and dead? Is it the fact that you're bored within seconds after getting on? Is it because you get angry within seconds of hopping on due to skill-based matchmaking? Is it because you feel no passion in the gaming industry nowadays with the developers only focusing on money grabbing techniques? Is it because the progress you are making in your game is meaningless and feels uneventful? Today we're going to discuss these in full details which all lead to why gaming feels dead today. First off, gaming has become stagnant due to lack of social features in many games. Partying up is no longer a feature and community features are non-existent. Games demotivate you from partying up because the players you matched with previously are off to find a new game. I'm not wildly enthusiastic about you. I feel like you're too slick. I don't trust you, so I'm out. Did you know that the lack of host game lobbies in some games is simply because the skill-based matchmaking needs to catch up based on your last game's performance? This pathetic system and many like it kill the game for many players. New friends are hard to come by unless you are crazy good at the game and pull in other good players to sweat your faces off. Speaking of friends, the diverse lineup of games out there leads to friends playing many different games. Our library of games stands at 385 titles and over half of Xbox One gamers have played a backward compatible game. But I've heard your feedback and you want more. Today, I'm pleased to announce an exciting expansion to the program. The game library keeps building, the console division keeps building, and even if there is crossplay, the system itself only works half the time to send friend requests to each other. Additionally, Discord and party chats lead parties to talk only among themselves rather than speak to others in the lobby. Back in the glory days of gaming, I had a split of friends playing custom games and other friends playing multiplayer. However, I was always guaranteed to find at least a few friends playing a custom game, something more relaxed that would give your friends a ton of laughter. There's no toll gate to stop people from giving Infinite Customs a try like there is for the MCC. There's no logical reasoning for Infinite to not have more people playing it, and by extension, custom games too. There's absolutely no need to sweat. Just sit back and relax with friends. Having fun games like this is difficult to come by nowadays, unless you are in a Discord specifically on this topic. Next thing you know, you were in a hundred different discords for random different things that you used to enjoy back in the day. Another major social killing feature that is in games nowadays is one week early accesses when pre-ordering games. Some people have tons of money and no life and proceed to beat the game, spoil it for you, and get max rank all before you can even access the game with a standard pre-order. This cash grab again detracts from the overall social features. Back in the day, midnight releases were incredible. Seeing the population spike shortly after waiting hours outside your local GameStop is something that will never return. Halo 3, midnight tonight. We're gonna set up the TV, my monitor. It's gonna be amazing. We're going right now to the grocery store to get all the junk food we can think of. I can't wait, it's gonna be amazing. It will be amazing. The digital age has also halted real-world friendships that you can find during these insane releases. Friends that would likely last longer than randoms found online. Rare armor isn't so rare anymore. You used to be able to get rare armor by pre-ordering the game preemptively and spending an extra $10-$20 to get some piece of armor. However, being rare nowadays is spending like $30 or $40 on an armor piece that no longer even matters. Whoever has the largest wallet tends to have the best skins. Forget challenges that include camaraderie for completion. Forget challenges that push your friends to the limits and allow you and your friends to go closer in the struggle. Rather, games just want your money. Once you kill 25 zombies, you can now head over to the green lights inside of the map. You now need to turn off four of the green lights using EMP. Oh yeah, leader of the pack. It feels good. Alright, it's the one. The next major shutting off point is the few streamers slash pros that never get off the game. If you're a competitive player, don't try to be the best unless you want to stream your life away on a game that won't mean anything in a few years. This phenomenon leads to complete massacres that skill-based matchmaking fights to eliminate. However, skill-based matchmaking and eliminating this leads to matches that feel sweaty regardless of social versus ranked. Wait, 
you played a different game for the past three weeks. Too bad. Suffer when you get back on for the first time. And because this skill-based matchmaking system just assumes you never left and will perform just as well as you did three weeks ago. This lose-lose situation leads to gaming being sweatier than ever before, with people grinding for meaningless XP. If you want to have fun in video games and you are new, only do it with friends. Don't dare try to solo a game and figure it out for the first time, because it will lead to a horrible experience. The passion of game development has been lost over the past five years with the introduction of battle passes and shops. Games focus way more on how they can exploit fanboys than they do making a full-fledged game at launch. Armor pieces that they marketed as free are being sold in the shop. I usually don't mind microtransactions. I've bought For Honor Steel, Destiny Silver, I bought Kung Fu Panda skins for Brawlhalla. But this is something else. The game being free is not an excuse for a business model this predatory. Why are indie games and fully developed games that release so successful nowadays? The gaming community misses this. In normal business practices, customers expect faster product development with greater quality for a cheaper price. This standard quality model is the complete opposite in the game industry nowadays. Games take longer to produce, they are unfinished, and the quality and passion is lackluster. While a few amazing games have come out recently, very few are from AAA studios. AAA studios are missing the mark, despite the countless extra resources and money provided to them. It's literally the inverse of what should be happening naturally. Improvement. The games that I still enjoy playing today are well-written stories and RPGs. The games are relaxing and chill, following a story that is not only entertaining but also doesn't consist of sweaty cheaters that only live next to their computer screen. Every storyline consisting of so many different choices and outcomes, it would take hundreds of hours to see and do it all. No quest is ever as straightforward as it seemed. RPGs are some of the only games that feel alive for me anymore while playing by myself. First-person shooters are only fun when you have friends to play with, and they're miserable if you're doing it by yourself. At least if you have the skill-based matchmaking system with you and your friends, you can at least be miserable together. And that's something that literally is the night and day difference between first-person shooters nowadays with the skill-based matchmaking. The worst part about all this is the younger generation. They don't know what it's like to have a game and not shove a battle pass or cosmetics down their throat. This younger generation doesn't fight it. They don't actually stop buying the new things because all their friends are doing it. And that's why cosmetics and Fortnite, for example, was so successful because everyone ordered the new thing. Even though it doesn't matter in like five years what that skin was and no one wears the old skins, people are still buying the new stuff and it just blows my mind. And this is the main reason why gaming feels dead. Do you guys ever remember Halo's shop actually having issues? But yet their game was absolute garbage. Like missed everything at launch because they were focused more on cosmetics in the store. So what do you guys think of gaming nowadays? Do you guys still think it feels alive? Leave a comment down below. Please like subscribe if you enjoyed today's video and until next time. That was sick.